I didn't realize I had a problem. But now, this just opened my eyes up to how bad it really was. We got the shocks with the springs uh, set up for you. What we're gonna do now is take your bags off, get the bike lifted up, take your old shocks off, put the new ones on, then we're gonna set your sag and show you how to make adjustments. The benefits of doing that, the way the bike handles, do it, seriously. Try it. Guys, it is an absolutely beautiful day, and I'm on another road trip. I'm on my way to Hendersonville, North Carolina. I'm going to Orleans, USA. I'm so excited to be going to Orleans. I used to call it Orleans, but they told me that it's pronounced Orleans. Hey, it's Tall. Hey, Tall, what's up? I'm Joe. Nice to meet you, Joe. Yeah, welcome to Orleans, USA. So, first off, Tall, I want to find out a little bit about what type of riding style you do, whether you ride majority one up, two up. 95% of the time, it's just, this is the way the bike works right here. You like to have fun in the corners, oh, yes, yeah. get aggressive. Oh, yes. You like the ability to be able to tune your shock, to yes. fine tune the top. Okay, yeah. awesome. Well, generally, with the information you provided to me, probably gonna lean towards our most popular selling shock, which is known as the HD 159. So how much do you weigh? Around 215 pounds. Okay, and mainly solo, no tour pack. Okay, right. that's gonna help us decide which spring to use. So we went with our HD 159s. Uh, there's no springs installed on these guys currently because we're gonna put the correct springs on for your weight. Okay. Uh, comes with the owner's manual, mounting instructions. But here are the actual units themselves. And these are the springs that we're gonna be putting on for your weight. If you want, we can go uh, go over into the lab area and show you how to use the spring compressor tool to put the springs on. Okay, sounds good. One side of the shock goes there. Put this reducer into here, and it's just basically compressing the spring that I'm able to slip this clip in. It. Okay. There you go. We've got the shocks with the springs uh, set up for you. What we're going to do now is take your bags off, get the bike lifted up, take your old shocks off, put the new ones on, then we're going to set your sag and show you how to make adjustments. Okay, Tall, so. The street glide originally comes stock with a 12-inch shock. Right. Do you want to stick with a 12-inch shock, or would you like to bring the rear end up? When you raise the rear of a bike, you're putting more weight towards the front, changing the weight bias. It will make the bike want to fall in the corners a lot easier. Dance in the corners with you, per se. If you have it lower in the back, you put more weight towards the rear, it takes more input to initiate a turn. I definitely want the biggest benefit out of it, so it sounds like I'd like it raised up a little bit. Sounds like a plan. Let's All make right. it happen. All right. Just using these reducer sleeves, this turns a 14 mil hole into a half inch hole for your shock. Your shock will come with eight of these spacers. I only use four of them. The shocks are identical. But the, what we do to set them up is on the right hand side, we'll set this little nylon set screw right there, facing out to the right on the right hand side. And then on the left hand side, we'll have it facing out to the left. Because later down the road, that nylon set screw is what we're going to use for adding or removing preload, letting you know how many turns and what direction you went. top first, and since we went with a longer shock, we're going to have to raise it. Now a lot of people don't realize this, but your swing arm is rubber mounted. You may go to install your shock, and even though they're set up exactly the same length, both of them, that you'll install one, and then you go to install the other one, and the holes don't line up. The fact that it's a rubber swing arm, I see a lot of variants there. I always set the right one on first, and then when you go to do the left, you may have to lower it just a hair to get the, the holes to line up. And that's simply because your swing arm is rubber mounted.
I like to torque these to 50 foot pounds. Okay, tall, now that we have the shocks installed, now we're gonna shoot for setting the sag for you. So we're gonna distinguish our two fixed points. I usually go with this mounting point on the swing arm to a fixed point on the back of the bike. I usually do millimeters. My go-to number is 300 millimeters. And when you do this, before you do this, you wanna make sure that your wheel does free spin. You don't want any weight on the bike. We're, what we're doing is we're taking an extended measurement from point A to point B. And like I said before, my go-to is 300, so I'm at 300 millimeters. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower the bike. We're gonna have you sit on it, and then I'm gonna measure from the same two points again to see where you're sitting in the stroke. All right, Tom, let's have you sit on the bike. Yeah, it's perfect. You're right at 25 mil. So right now, so all these shocks are set up for you. Right. The rule of thumb is, for every 25 pounds you add to the rear of the motorcycle, you're gonna want one full rotation of preload to each shock to compensate. So let's say your passenger was 100 pounds. I'm gonna wanna add four full turns of preload to each side, compressing the spring to compensate for their weight. And then right now, here's the thing, for your solo setup, see the gap in between the head and the top of that collar? Yeah. Your solo setup, that's 24 millimeter gap. So when you're riding solo, that gap should be 24 millimeter. And then when you add your passenger, she was 100 pounds, add four full turns to compensate. You definitely want to do that on both sides. Okay. So we talked about preload. The next feature we're going to talk about is your external rebound adjuster. Now from the factory, it comes stock at 20 clicks. Well, how do I know what 20 clicks is? You gotta have a starting point. That starting point is going all the way to the right to set the needle into the seat of the jet, and that's considered zero. So now I'm at zero, and I'm gonna count back to the left, 20 clicks. Twenty clicks. Generally, guys that like to ride aggressive, to have fun in the twisties, I usually see them at eighteen clicks from fully closed or sixteen clicks. See guys that are going to be on the highway all day and they just want that plush, floaty feeling. They may be at twenty-two or twenty-four. That's the beauty about these shocks is you can tune what type of ride that you're looking for with that external rebound adjustment. Right. And remember, whatever you do to one side, you want to do the same exact thing to the other side so they work together, not against each other. Now your shocks are installed, let's get your bags back on and take it for a ride, see what you think. Alright guys, so I just got my new rear shocks put on at Olean's USA and I'm so excited about it. The back end sits up higher than it did and uh, I'm okay with that. When he told me the performance benefits of having the uh, back end up a little bit higher, I had to go that route. I haven't even been a mile, but I can tell the difference. Let me hit this manhole cover. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, it's a big difference. On the ride home, I'll be able to tell you a lot more about this. It feels good, it really does. He wasn't kidding when he was talking about the turn. It turns different. There's a bump. If you haven't, I don't want to give like a full review yet because you're going to say, how can he do that? He ain't even been a mile away from the place. But I'm impressed. What I feel so far, I'm impressed with this. So I can imagine after I go home, it's about a 135 mile ride home. I'll be able to give you a full review on what I think about it I get to get get to uh, go on the highway and get up to some uh, go through some curves at some speed but the ride it feels really good if I would have known raising this motorcycle up would make it feel like this I would have did that a long time ago I like them low and slam too but raising this motorcycle up, I can feel the, I mean, just the way it turns, it, it, it does, it turns and handles completely different. Railroad tracks again, not slowing down. 
All right, so I need to get back to Olean's and I will uh, start the video again on my way home. All right, see you then. One of the things that you said about the uh, lifting the rear end up a little bit, I can tell it really changes the way the bike performs. It really does. It turns different, everything about it. Everything about it that you said was exactly right. And if anybody's on the fence about having the rear end lifted up, the benefits of doing that, the way the bike handles, do it, seriously. Try it, lift it up and see what, you, see what I'm talking about. It changes everything. It changes the way it turns. It changes everything about it. And I look forward to the ride home. I didn't realize how bad the tree fly suspension was until you put this on here. Man, listen. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, Tom. Pleasure. Man. Thank you. It's amazing how much comfort, how much control, how much handling it provides, especially over the stop stuff. So I'm going to get on the bike, start headed back home, and you, you'll be able to see all the footage from the GoPro as I ride through the gorge. I think it's going to be a totally different ride than it was this morning. Okay guys, so I'm wrapping up my time here at Olean. I want to thank Joey for uh, doing the install on my motorcycles. All right, thanks Joey. Todd, it's been a pleasure, man. Right. Joey, if you got any questions, you know where we're at. All right, Give sounds good. I'll see you at one of the rallies. Yeah, man, sounds good. Oh man, I can tell the difference. I can tell the difference. I can get around the corner now. Oh yeah, none of that wobbling anymore. <laughs> oh boy, yeah, that is awesome. I didn't realize I had a problem. But now, this just opened my eyes up to how bad it really was. The suspension is so much better than stock. So much better. And this was just the rear. None of that wobbling going around the turns. Oh man, this is so nice. I mean, I really, really, really want to get into it hard in the corner, but I'm not, I'm not. But it feels good. If you want to watch more of this ride video, I will be uploading a couple more videos from my trip to Olean's. One will be the ride up before the suspension and one will be the ride back home with the new suspension. They gave me a tour of Olean's USA, so you'll see that video coming real soon. I want to thank everyone from Olean's USA. Special thanks to Joey Sabrizi and Michael Hensley. I want to thank you guys for showing me around. Thank you for the hospitality. I can't say enough about these Olean's shocks. They make my bike ride fantastic. Go by your local motorcycle dealership or visit your favorite motorcycle online vendor and ask them about the Olean suspension. It definitely changed the way my bike handles and performs with the comfort, the handling. It's a total different motorcycle. Make sure you go try a pair of them for yourself. Comment below, let me know what you think about the suspension. I want to thank everyone for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day.